Hi everyone, I am D.S. Negi, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Government PG College, Bhupeshwar, District Chamoli, Uttarakhand. Dear friends, today we will be discussing a very beautiful and renowned poem of Thomas Gray which is uh, entitled as Elegy written in a country churchyard. It's a new kind of experience friends to deal with you all as a part of online course as a part of online lecture series today we are going to discuss Thomas Gray's Allergy you know friends this is a new kind of technology, new kind of teaching learning interactions which the new generation is well aware about and they should know how to use the tools and technology as a part of uh, ICT. As a part of ICT, information, communication and technology and the coming time is really going to be full of technology yeah, so everyone needs to be uh, internet savvy and he or she must know how to use tools and technology to avail the education however the things are just a click away from your reach but still the teacher taught relationship is always uh, always you know interactive should be interactive so in this poem that uh, I mentioned with you I am just waiting for some more students to come uh, let's see how many come in the first attempt and then we will be continuing with this so when we talk about Thomas Gray when we talk of allergy so the most trusted name who has written allergies in a wide range is Thomas Gray allergy what actually allergy is allergy is basically a poem of lamentation a poem of sorrow that you sing in the loving memory of their death and you offer that poem or song to that dear and near ones you dedicate that song to your beloved ones dear and near ones and Thomas Gray before uh, others join us let's discuss uh, Thomas Gray in presently in Sridev Sumini University campus uh, University uh, this poem is prescribed for MA uh, second semester and uh, BA second semester and other universities it is also prescribed somewhere in first semester somewhere in BA third semester also and somewhere in MA fourth semester also so it is widely acclaimed uh, poem of uh, Thomas Gray widely acclaimed all over the world this is read this is taught and this is loved and this is highly criticized for its its compositions uh, it's such a long poem actually long in the sense uh, he has written this poem in 29 stanzas and 29 stanzas you know into four 
because each stanza is consisted of four lines and the rhyming scheme of the poem is a b a b a b and finally uh, the poem is followed by an epitaph that uh, he has written of three uh, stanza uh, three quartons four line stanzas so you see the wide range and he's uh, thomas gray as he was born in 1716 and died in 1771 and he's uh, known not only an elegiac poet but rather he's also known as the precursor of romantic poets because uh, after him the romanticism came uh, in much popularity the people liked uh, the uh, romantics, the romantic poetry, romantic compositions. This poem is uh, basically he dedicated to, this elegy he dedicated to the poor people. There is a general notion in the society that the people only praise the powerful people, the rich people, the people who have wealth, the people who have knowledge, the people who are popular because of different ways, who are working in different fields. But here a different connotation has been brought by Thomas Gray as some critics say that this is somewhat in somewhat in some way it is an autobiographical kind of poetry that he has uh, uh, written as uh, with his friend when and basically this poem was written in Buckingham Shire and uh, the village he uh, talks about he stokes pages where he used to stay with his aunt and sometimes back she passed away and she was a little and he was a little bit nostalgic about her death about her demise so he starts this poem basically in her loving memory or some part or mostly or moreover you can see this is totally dedicated towards or to the people about whom he says they are unlucky because they were they are born poor, they live poor, they die poor, unlamented, unremembered, unknown and unsung. Apart from this elegy written in country churchyard in 1750, he is also known for his agrifying, his odes and the famous one, the progress of poesy, the bard, on a distance prospect of Eton College, him to adversity, the fatal sisters, and the descent of Odin. Friends, this is uh, this was a brief introduction about uh, the writer. As this poem is a legendary one, if the best ten poems all over the world are counted, I think. This allegedly written in country charts will surely find the place among them. So one day he was just you know walking through in the churchyard of a countryside that he talks of Stokes Pages in Buckinghamshire, where he used to stay with his aunt who has recently died. He by seeing the pathetic view of churchyard and the church of a countryside particularly, the rural side, the village, where common people are buried, where poor people are buried. And he says, because the church was meant for the poor people so there were no FTF on their graves nothing was written there special on the loving memory of those poor people 
because they were not lucky enough they were not fortunate enough to do something worthy that could be remembered by their successors in the life or their followers their pupils their children so he says uh, how he describes he says i am being a poet i can do nothing to you all but i can write if no one has written the beautiful lines the poetic lines in your loving memory but i can do that so he writes this elegy in a country churchyard in the loving memory of those poor people of the society and they are people it's not their fault it's the fault of their fate they are, they are misfortunate because they could not become rich they could not become the powerful they could not become the conqueror they could not become the emperor so he says that is not their fault but because of their poverty their talents was suppressed it could not come out it could not be exposed among the people otherwise they could have served the society in different way a lot of examples the historical references he has taken to prove his point to prove his statement so uh, let's start the poem line by line the curfew tolls the knell of parting day uh, it's actually long as i told you earlier 29 stanzas are there and we would uh, at least cover the first half at least 15 stanzas in this lecture the curfew tolls the knell of parting day he is just standing alone there as he was the poet of melancholy thomas gray he always enjoys his aloofness he always enjoys his sequestered life he enjoys his loneliness so a day he is standing all set in a melancholic mood in the churchyard and he described that scene that he feels that dull atmosphere there the curfew tolls the knell of parting day there is a tradition in Christianity or there is a uh, tradition that around 8 o'clock in the evening they used to bell they used to ring a bell and that was a sign of that all have to put out their fire and now they should smother the fire and they have to go to sleep so that any kind of uh, mishaps could not happen in a society in villages so he says this is the time of curfew and curfew here means tolls the bell the warning bell in the evening the curfew tolls the knell of parting day parting day means uh, the day is dying the day is going to end and the lowing herd went slowly over the lee lowing herds uh, is talking about humming animals those who are coming from the wood forest after grazing and he says they have come uh, he just described the scene in the evening you just can imagine the scene in the evening in a village where the people are coming from their day work the uh, the working men of the family are coming from their fields the ladies are coming from their cow sets students coming back from uh, their studies the children are coming back from their after their sports uh, or their play uh, from the playgrounds so there is a scene of a village life when how in the evening slowly over the lee lee you know meadow he talks about a grassy land the plowman homeward plots his very way even the plowmen the peasants the farmers they are coming back for after plowing their fields very way basically the way is not weird very here means tired how can the way be tired a person who goes after a hard work on that way he is tired not the way but he has very beautifully used the transferred epithet where the noun the animate noun is not being qualified by the uh, adjective rather an inanimate noun like uh, there is an example of uh, transferred epithet sleepless night 
night can never be sleepless yes the persons because of some disturbances they could not have the proper sleep but because of the persons who are not having uh, sleep the night is supposed to be the sleepless night so this is a very beautiful example of transferred epithet so he says very way the way actually is the way is not tired the way is not existed the person who is treading upon the way he is tired so he says the plowman homeward plows his very way and leaves the world to darkness and to me and the whole world now means the day is converting into the night the day is changing into the night and and leaves the world to darkness and to me now darkness growing up and the whole this world is now like a dark night the time of disappointment the time of disappear despair the time of nothingness the time of pessimism he sees before him because in the night he says there is no life now fades the glimmering landscape on the side and he now describes in the next stanza and all the air is solemn stillness holds say where the beetle wheels wheels his droning flight and dozy tinklings lull the distant falls he is just giving a beautiful picturization of the landscape he is surrounded with he has on his surround now fades the glimmer the light the you just can image the time you just can imagine the time in the evening the time of sunset there is a kind of yellow light reddish light depend on the different uh, climatic zone he says now fades the glimmering landscape on the side landscapes the light on the landscapes that is thrown upon that is also diminishing diminishing and all the air is solemn stillness holds and now the air of the night becomes little bit cold little bit serious little bit he says stillness means chilled it's going to be say where the beetle wheels is droning flight and dozy tingling flow the distant force there is no disturbances now quietness everywhere silence everywhere except one disturbance is there a form say where the beetle wheels is droning flight there is an insect making the flights of his feathers and there is none that is a droning a little drone you must have seen in the night drone or droning insect making you know chilled or careless sound <clears throat> say where the beetle wheel his droning flight and dozy tinkling slow the distant folds and only the tinklings or the sounds of the bell of the sheep those who are somewhere near tied with rings on the neck and the slowly slowly some tinkling sound of those rings coming out from them save that from yonder ivy metal tower the mopping old dust to the moon complain of such as wandering near her secret bower molest her ancient solitary rain save here is being used as in form of besides in form of except he says save that from yonder ivy mental tower there is he has taken the references of two important trees of the churchyard one is ivy and the other one he talks yew trees these two trees he has particularly mentioned here say that from yonder ivy mental tower the moping all dust the moon complain there used to live there used to dwell a moon uh, a an, an owl and he does complain to the moon that my privacy is being hindered my privacy is being disturbed my privacy is being interrupted by some unknown 
person and who is that unknown person to a wolf? The poet himself, Thomas Gray, because he was unexpected there. All the people are lying there, they are buried there, the churchyard is full of the dead bodies, the dead the dead bodies in the cups of those common people, the poor people of the countryside. Of such is wandering near her secret bower, molest the ancient solitary reign. Because he was a king of that fool. He was among a couple of people who are living there, who are alive. And all is one of them. And he says, he does complain about me to moon that some unknown person can uh, has uh, no person has happened to come here and he does not digest his presence there because he was not expected there because he was habitual or he was accustomed to live in that solitary life of that churchyard of such is wanting near her secret bar molest the ancient solitary reign beneath these ragged irons that you trees shade perhaps the tough in many a molding heap each in his narrow cell forever laid the rude forefathers of the hamlet sleep now he says, talks about the land of the church which is all rough or broken and he says, why is this land so uneven, so broken, so rough? Because they are not properly covered because some poor people, forefathers of these villages, these laymen, these commoners, the forefathers, their ancestors, their parents are buried here but they were not properly buried because they were poor. They born poor, they live poor, and they died poor, unlamented, unremembered, unknown, unsung. No song was written in their glory, in their loving memory. So the next one is <clears throat> the breezy call of incense, breathing on the swallow twittering from the strawberry shed. The cock shall clarion nor the coin horn. No more shall rouse them from their lowly bed. Those people, those poor, unfortunate forefathers of these common villages, they were not given a respectful adieu. They were not given a respectful funeral because they were poor. Nobody cares about their death. Nobody cares about their honor. So they were roughly buried in this churchyard because the churchyard was common people and they were not given the due respect as much as they should have been given or as much as is given to some other people of the society, those who are rich, those who are heroes in different fields, those who are great singers. Great writers, great poet, great politicians, great bureaucrats, but they common people. So common people are paid no heed. Nobody gives their attention to them. But here he says again. He just turns his uh, way of thinking and his his experience comes out in form of the breezy call of incense breathing on the shallow treating from the stable shed, the cock shrill clarion or the cooing horn. No more shall rouse them from their lowly bed. Those forefathers, the poor fellow fathers, the mean forefathers, he says to them, they are, they were in the habit of waking up early in the morning by a cock shrill. They used to wake up early in the morning by the breezy smell of the air. They used to uh, wake up in the morning by the twittering the chirping of the birds. But alas, now they are dead. No, these mages will work upon them now. They cannot be woke up now by the breezy call of incense breathing. The breezy, the, the, the fragrance of the morning, the dawn. No bird will be able to wake them up by the chirping, by their twittering, and no cock still will be able to make them wake up because they are slept there, but not for a night. 
they are slept there forever they are dead now they have gone on their final journey and nobody will be able to them make them awake so he says at least before going on their final journey final destination this should have at least been given the respectable honor of funeral the last rites no more shall rose them from the lowly bed for them no more the blazing heart shall burn for those poor people those who are buried in this rugged rugged and rough churchyard of this countryside as their wives their family members used to impatiently wait them in the evening and they used to welcome by firing the fireplace but alas nobody is going to the, nobody is waiting for them now simply nobody is going to welcome them because they are dead they will not come back again nobody for them no more the blazing her cell burn or busy housewife ply her evening care even the housewife will not be waiting for them they will not be welcoming their arrival as they use sometimes back they used to impatiently wait for their husbands because they have gone now they are no more alive their children too will not wait for them there will be no competition among the brothers and sisters to have the first kiss of their fathers no children run to lisp their sides written they are not waiting for their fathers now or clans kiss need and wait kiss to share even they are not in the competition of who will kiss the father first you know how monetly he has described every scene he has very widely imagined the scene how a common man passes through day by day in his common life common course of his domestic life again he in this stanza he eulogizes he praises the power their hard working capacity their capability and he says oft did harvest to their sickly yield their furrow oft the stubborn glebe has brought how jocund did they drive their team afield how bore the woods beneath their sturdy stroke he says these unknown fellows these unknown people of the countryside today are of no importance but once or when they were alive they used to be very powerful they used to be very of very importance to their family they used to be the master of their work in what way oft did the harvest to their sickly yield they were very expert in harvesting the crop and he sees he says very oft did the harvest to their sickly yield means the crop which they used to cut that automatically surrender that used to surrender before them because they, they were so expert and say used to cut the crop by sickling use uh, you know a, a weapon which is used to harvest the crop that is called sickle he says they did not harvest the crop but crop usually surrender before them they automatically automatically used to harvest before them because they, they were so expert so it is just comparison it's kind of hyperbole exaggeration he has used that how the uh, crop and the uh, used to be used to surrender before them because they were so powerful those who expert in their domestic and agriculture works or busy housewife their furrow of the stubborn glebe has broke furrow he has used you know, as a plow and furrow the first part which used to uh, plow the field he used to they, they were able to plow the hardest field hardest farms because of their power because of their mastery because of their expertise because of their perfection in domestic and agriculture works 
How joken did they drive the team a field? And they used to enjoy the plowing team. Team here means the pair of the oxen. Once they are two, only then they are able to. The field is to be plowed. They are tied together with the help of a wooden yoke. He has taken the references here. How joking did they means they used to enjoy their plowing the field with the team of their oxen. They very merrily they used to plow their field without any uh, problem, without any pressure, without any uh, any kind of burden. He says, how bored the woods beneath their study too, and they were also the master of running with the axe, running the axe, axe says he, they used to cut the uh, wood, means even the largest trees, the strongest trees, they used to cut within seconds. So it's a very beautifully he has uh, shown the power uh, with the help by using hyperbole, exaggeration, simile, figure of a speech, uh, not simply, figure of a speech, how they were master of doing all these domestic course in their life. But today, they are lying dead, are of no use. Uh, how joking did they drive the team afield? How bored the woods beneath their study? Let not ambition. Let not ambition. This is very important. Uh, This is generally asked in examination these two uh, stanza number one number eight or nine are very important and every year asked in the examinations and are very meaningful really let's try to understand these two let not ambition mock their useful toil the homely joys and destiny obscure now Granger here with a disdainful smile, the short and simple annals of the poor. He says, okay, leave it aside whether they were given the honor, whether they were, they, they, they were given the respect in their funeral, leave it aside. Doesn't matter whether they have been given or not. But the rich people, the wealthy people, the powerful people, the ambitious people, the position people of the society should not mock at them. They should not make the they should not make the fun of their talent, their poverty, their simplicity in the life. Doesn't matter whether they were happy or not. Doesn't matter whether they were, they were rich or not. Only because they were not rich should they be insulted? No. So he suggests that the rich people, wealthy people, powerful people, or the great leaders, the politicians, the bureaucrats, or the most popular stars of different fields should not mock at their poverty, should not mock at their family background, should not mock at them their social stature, their social strata. He says, let not ambition mock their useful toil and they should not demean their physical work because physical work is not a symbol of a low grade work. He says, because of the physical work, this world has come into power. This world has come into existence. The people have because of their physical work, because of their physical labor, they have created the historical mansions created all the physical things that you see around yourself. Their homely joys and destiny obscures. Even they should not make the fun of their domestic joys. They because they might be busy. They might be celebrating their life on their own way with the limited things. So they should not, and they should also not mock at their destiny because. Their destiny was not in their hands. They were made to work hard only. But they could not change. They could not have changed their destiny. They could not have changed their fate. They could, what, whatever they could have changed, they did. They did 
all the hard work they could have done. No Granger here with a disdainful smile. And they should, means the rich people, those who were rich in comparison to them, those who were popular in comparison to them, those who were of higher class in comparison to them, in comparison to them they should not make, they should not throw a scornful smile on them. They have no right to hate them. Why should they be hated? If you cannot love them, you cannot hate them. Because they were happy in their own life. And they were doing no harms to anyone. The short and simple annals of the poor. They might be having some simple stories of their life. The common achievements of their life. So the great people or even those who have got a lot of achievements, they should not mock at their common gestures, common life. Because they are also having their own existence on this earth and this earth is not meant for only the people who are, who are born with a silver spoon on their mouth. Those who are born rich, those who were born only in the royal families, the prince and princess, no. All the living beings have equal right to live coexistently on this earth because that is not meant only for the rich. That is meant for the poor too. So he says, the boast of heraldry, the uh, next one, the very important one, and this is, uh, I can say, the most quoted lines, these are the most quoted lines of this poem. The boast of heraldry and the pomp of power and all that beauty, all that wealth ever gave awaits alike an inevitable hour. The path of glory lead but to the grave. I just remember a very beautiful poem or it's part of a poem that uh, was sung by Gopal Das Neeraj that is quite similar in meaning with that, with these lines. इस दुनिया में कोई न रहा सब नामी और अनाम गए कुछ पता नहीं सब किधर गए कुछ सुबह गए कुछ शाम गए तो आखिर किस बात का अहंकार है किस बात का घमंड है इस दुनिया में तो न राजा ने रहना है न रानी ने रहना है न सबसे धनी आदमी ने रहना है न बड़े से बड़े गीतकार ने रहना है जिसके एक झलक पाने के लिए आज लाखों लोग उसके घर के आगे चले जाते हैं न इस तरह के किसी फिल्मी सितारे ने इस दुनिया में रहना है न ऐसे राजा चक्रवर्ती राजा ने रहना है सब लोग चले गए उस तरह के एक भाव आप इसमें पाएंगे द बोस्ट ऑफ हेराल्ड्री डजेंट मैटर विच रॉयल फैमिली डू यू बिलोंग टू यू डोंट नीड टू बोस्ट ऑफ योर फैमिली बैकग्राउंड दैट विच फैमिली डू यू बिलोंग टू वेदर यू आर यू बिलोंग टू द फैमिली ऑफ और यू आर ए सक्सेसर ऑफ ए किंग Successor of the most rich, the, the, the richest person of the world, successor of the film star, successor of a poet, the son of the most popular man of the world, doesn't matter. So you don't need to, they should not boast of their heraldry, they should not talk about their family. The pomp of power and they don't, they do not need to show their power, which they have acquired by exploiting the poor people of their society. If you talk of the monarchy, the monarchs were powerful because they used to exploit in general the wealth of the common people and they used to MS, they used to gather the wealth and they used to form their own army. And generally you must have seen in the monarchical empire, they used to suppress the voice that used to come against them. So he says, and all that beauty, all that wealth ever given, all the beauties of the world, because they were most beautiful, the death cannot excuse them. Death cannot forgive them. Means, doesn't matter how beautiful you are, however beautiful you may be, However rich you may be, however good family or royal family you may be belonging to, however wealthy you may be, however tricky you may be, however talented you may be, awaits like the inevitable hour, the pass of glory lead but to the grave. 
but that ultimate that hour inevitable hour which cannot be avoided and what is that death maut ki ghadi sabka saman roop se intezar karte hain means doesn't matter how ever powerful you are doesn't matter which family do you belong to doesn't matter how ever royal your family is doesn't matter uh, you are a king of the prime minister uh, you you are the son of a prime minister doesn't matter you are the son of the president doesn't matter that you are a princess of any state doesn't matter how you are the uh, miss universe miss world because death has to come and uh, death comes equally to all your power your grandeur cannot avoid the death so beware of death because that has to come like these common people are buried today tomorrow you will be buried there so he says Awaits alike the inevitable hour, the pass of glory lead, but the, all the glory that we have gathered today, all these glories of the worldly pleasures lead us to the grave. Means, whatever we earn, whatever we amass and gather today, but finally, all of us, whether rich, whether poor, whether ugly, whether beautiful, whether long, whether short, whether tall, all have to go to the Go on. Uh, all have to go on their final destination. And where is the final destination? Grave. All have to die. If everyone has to die, if all have to die one day, so why should you be proud of? There is nothing to be proud of. Why is so haughty? He says, where. Where it's like the inevitable, the pass of glory, really, but to the grave. All have to die. The hour of death equally awaits everyone, without being bothered about their position. Nor you, ye proud, impute to these the fall in memory over their tons no trophies raised. So what? If no trophies were made in their were not raised in their memory, if no statues, no studs were made in their living memories. Where through the long drawn ale and fretted war, the peeling and themselves the notes of praise. No songs, no eulogy were written in their death. So he again asks the question. This is called hypothetical question, which cannot, which the poet himself cannot answer, and which is generally answered in no. Means even those people who were very popular when they were alive and after their death, if their children their sons their daughters have raised monuments in their living memory but what can these monuments bring the breath to them can these monuments can 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 these monuments make them alive again no so what if the poor people were not uh, given the due respect after their death on their death and no Monuments were created in their living memory. No songs were written in their living memory. What ha what if they were uh, they they died uh, poor? What if they lived poor? What if they were unknown, unremembered, unlamented? Can stories earn or animated burst? Even the stories earn. He says, "Stories earn." He is just taking a reference of uh, a picture which is full of. Uh, uh, ash and which is supposed to pour on the holy places like uh, the Ganges or some other places but even they were not given these kind of uh, they were not given these kind of uh, final uh, rights but even those whose picture whose earned stories were taken to Haridwar suppose taken to Nasi or taken to Allahabad but were they brought back? Was their life brought back because of doing all these funeral rites and traditional uh, rites? No. He says, back to its mansion called the fleeting breath. Even you made 100 feet statue in loving memory of some great people of his time. But can his life be taken back? No. If their life cannot be taken back, so what if nobody and their children could not make uh, such long... Um, Stages in the loving memory of their forefathers because of their poverty. Can honor voice provoke the silent dust? Even 
the song which you sung in which you sing in the loving memory of your forefathers can also bring their life back if not so it doesn't matter whether we have written some song in the loving memory of these poor fellows or not or flattery soothe the dull cold ear of death even the flattery you do after somebody gone can they enjoy that flattery which they once they used to enjoy when they were alive once they are dead no glory matters they never know whether the statue which is planted somewhere installed somewhere in the crossroads of your city the people in which loving memory the statue has been made he never knows that my statue is there the people must be regarding that statue maybe paying their respect their tribute on my birthday on my death day if not that possible so why should we mock at the life of the poor people perhaps in this neglected spot is laid some heart once pregnant with the celestial fire now he has just taken a turn and he says all the peoples those who were poor and who died poor does not mean that they were not talented if you are born in a poor family so that's not a fault that is a fault of your destiny that is a fault of your fortune you can change it he says perhaps in this neglected spot is laid he says he is just giving some historical references here to prove the talent of those poor people those who are roughly buried without any respect in the church yard he says perhaps in this neglected spot is laid he says among these dead bodies there might be a man who was once full of celestial fire from determination hence that the rod of empire might have swayed he could have been a great king if he would have been given a chance but because of his poverty he was not given any chance hence that the rod of empire might have swayed or waved extras the living liar even he could have become a great liar musician he could have become a great singer he could have become a great artist if he would have been given training if he would have given an opportunity to expose the talent but because they were poor they were unfortunate they were unlucky enough that they were not born in a rich family in the family of the great people of their at that time so he says so because they were not given the opportunity they were not provided with the opportunity they were not given good education it does not mean they were not able to get the edu education if they could not sing any song it does not mean they could not have sung the song if they would have been been given a proper training of singing music playing the drums and guitars everything they must have proved their talent their potential so very beautifully he defends the talent of those uh, poor people of that village but knowledge to their eyes are ample pays rich with the spoils of time did never unroll he says they could have read they could have become the great scholar but the goddess of knowledge muse she is known as in greek mythology the goddess of knowledge like we in indian mythology we take saraswati as the goddess of knowledge he करें कि हो सकता है कि उन गरीबों को मां सरस्वती का वरद हस्त प्राप्त न हुआ हो लेकिन इसका यह मतलब तो नहीं कि वो पढ़ नहीं सकते थे क्योंकि वो गरीब थे हो सकता उनको पढ़ने का मौका ना मिला हो लेकिन इसका यह मतलब तो नहीं कि वो पढ़ ही नहीं सकते थे हो सकता हो अगर सरस्वती की उन पर कृपा रही होती तो तुम में से और हम में से जिनको हम आज पूजनीय मानते हैं बड़े विद्वान उनसे भी बड़े विद्वान बन सकते थे लेकिन क्या सिर्फ इस वजह से कि वो गरीब थे हमको उनका मजाक उड़ाना चाहिए और उनको हमने पढ़ने का मौका नहीं दिया chill penury repressed their noble rage because with their poverty suppressed their all emotions all hopes all wishes of studying because of the poverty they could not go to schools they could not given the education they could not get the education and froze the general current of the soul and the soul they were born with was able to get anything they wished 
but because of their poor family background they were deprived of all these gestures of the love and because of they were banned in a sense they were not lucky enough to be blessed with all these blessings of life they cannot be insulted they cannot be mocked at they cannot be made the fun of full many a gem of purest resi he has beautifully now is uh, comparing the quality the talents the existence of those poor so what so many flowers are blooming in the desert unseen unsmelled kai aisa phool hai jo rajasthan mein ko khilte hain sabhi phoolon ko to sabhi log unki sugandh ka anand nahi le pate aise hi garib bhi rahe honge jinka anand jo apne jinke jinke hunar ka loha log na dekh paaye ho so what if यहाँ तक कि हीरे जो समुद्र की अथाह गहराई में रहते हैं उनको भी हर कोई तो नहीं देख पाता है हो सकता है ये बेचारे को उसी तरह से हीरे की तरह हो जो इस गरीबी की गहराई में कहीं दबे पड़े हैं छिपे पड़े हैं द डार्क अनफेदम्ड केव्स ऑफ ऑशन बियर फुल मैनी फ्लावर्स इज बॉर्न टू ब्लस अनसीन एंड वेस्ट इट स्वीटनेस ऑन द डेजर्ट एयर मैनी फ्लावर्स आर लॉस्ट इन द डेजर्ट मैनी डायमंड आर लॉस्ट इन द डीपेस्ट ऑफ द सी बिकॉज they were not accessible they were not accessed by the human hands some vles hemden that with dauntless breast the little tyrant of his fields with stood some mute in glorious milton here may rest some cromel guiltless of his country's blood this is the concluding stanza of the first part of this uh, poem the Elegy in the country churchyard. He says a very beautiful example or message he is trying to give that if you have got some degrees in your life, it does not means others could not have achieved those degrees. Because of some reasons, they could have missed those opportunities of getting the wealth, getting the degrees, getting the money, earning, uh, making the mansions. Uh, raising the buildings buying the cars and the bungalows it does not mean that they were not able to raise all these things yes they were equally capable but they could not do that so he says full many uh, some vles hampton that with dauntless fist he just uh, taken a, an a historical reference here he is taken that here may be some hampton john hampton he is taking a reference who was a cousin of cromwell cromwell was a king and at that time to protest the order of a king was like a death penalty but he did dare who hampton he says even being the cousin of the king cromwell he opposed his decision of ship tax because the decision was not passed by the parliament so he was even those these poor fellows poor people of this village those who were poor they might be equally brave fearless brave heart like john hampden who opposed who protested against the decision of his uncle king cromwell means these people could have been equally brave some mute some village hampton that with dauntless breast the little tyrant of his fields with stood even he could have gone in support of his land and he has been able to save his land from all these taxes some mute in glorious milton here may rest and among these people some milton may be there milton at that time was you know widely read and very popular poet of england even being blind he wrote many legends to work like on his blindness his poem the famous one the paradise lost he written so he compares even if they if these poor people could have been taught 
if they could have given the proper education they could have e become equally popular poet like john milton but because they could not become john milton because of some reasons should they be insulted should they be mocked at no they should not be mocked at at all because of their penury because of their poverty some cromwell guiltless of his country's blood some cromwell he just taken one more uh, example here some cromwell guiltless of his country's blood he has taken again a reference of means he just given that cromwell because he was guiltless because he did oppose the decision he could not take the decision which he could become a victim of and he saved his motherland means some generous people some liberal people like cromwell uh, in, in, in this example he is taking here means these people could have become equally talented in all the fields if they could have if they would have been given the chance to scatter plenty over a smiling land to plenty of a smiling land and read their history in a nation's eyes their lot favored not circumscribed along the growing virtues but their crimes confined he says uh, those people if they had given the opportunity they would have created the history and today they would have been taught to the coming generations in the history books that such great were their forefathers but alas they could not do all these things they were they did they lived their simple life they could not do they were away from the all hustle and bustle of their life so today we are going to finish this uh, uh, first part of this beautiful elizabeth and country churchyard by thomas gray and finally he says the poor people of any society are not to be insulted because they are poor because they are equally uh, they are of equal importance but because of their poverty they could not avail the uh, opportunity to do something great in different fields they could have become equally uh, great in uh, learning great in teaching they could have become good kings they could have become good scholar they could have become good singer they could have become good scholars but because of poverty so poverty is not a curse it is a state it is a circumstances so poverty should not be cursed at poverty should not be mocked at poverty should not be the people are equally of importance to the society those who are laborers those those who do the physical works they should not be insulted they should not be ignored they should not be mocked at and uh, he says what if the some people in the society are poor uh, live poor be uh, born poor live poor grow poor die poor unknown unlamented and unsung they are of equal importance to the society so thank you friends i hope uh, you must have enjoyed uh, this uh, facebook live lecture and this is really very good experience to uh, interact with you all guys i hope there are some questions uh, maybe some greetings from the different uh, students uh, many students are coming up there and i will be interacting with you all in comment box please uh, do uh, like this uh, facebook page of our department department of english government pg college gofisher for the upcoming videos upcoming lectures and other reading uh, material i hope uh, for, we will be very soon face uh, to face with uh, some more lectures on the other side happy uh, learning happy studying enjoy your studying and uh, be safe at your home stay at home and also aware of the people regarding this corona very soon we are going to win over this uh, uh, global uh, epidemic or even it has taken the shape of pandemic so thank you stay happy